Sorry, babe. I'm an ambitious girl. You're just small time. Liberty City is in shock today as the police and emergency services deal with the aftermath of a devastating attack on a police convoy this morning. As yet, no details have been released about the prisoners being transferred in the convoy, and no group has claimed responsibility. The convoy left police headquarters early this morning for a routine transfer of felons to Liberty Penitentiary. The attack took place on the Callahan Bridge, leaving few witnesses and the bridge itself severely damaged. Some of the convicts are thought to have perished in the explosion that followed the initial attack. Revelations as to the professionalism of the attack struck police hours afterward when identification of the missing felons were further hampered by an attack by computer hackers on police headquarter databases. With the Porter Tunnel Project falling behind schedule, this disaster leaves Portland isolated from the rest of the city. Come on! Senor Dickhead! It's no problem to kill you. You're gonna be sorry. Aye, aye, get lost. <laughs> <laughs> The sheer destruction, the lost human lives, all the hard work put into the bridge, all lost. But it makes for a great escape. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low. But my hands are all that stuff, so you better drive, brother. All right, welcome, folks, to my latest Let's Play. This time, it's Grand Theft Auto 3. Who asked for this? No one. But I just want to do it. I'm just turning off trials. Because that, that stuff just annoys me. It makes the game look a little bit more eh. And I guess it gets rid of the style factor, but... Um, it's just less annoying. Anyway. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I should tell you right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to... Avoid copyright problems by uh, not playing the radio. So sorry. But anyway, it is now time for this little thing. Oh, and uh, this Let's Play of Grand Theft Auto 3, this is 100%. So, yeah, I'm going to get everything possible in the game that goes towards 100%. And the rewards for doing such things get pretty insane. So anyway, let's change out of our nice orange clothes. Alright. Now, actually getting this game to run is really iffy on the PC version. Like, I know the PC Master, Master Race guys are just gonna go all over the place. Alright. Yeah, people are gonna go all over the face, ah, it's like, you can install all these mods, but it's really bad when I had to install a mod just to get the game to run. Alright, Luigi's Girls will actually be the only mission we do in this part. I just wanted this to be a brief rundown and just introduction into the game, because what I'm about to do afterwards is a bit uh, ridiculous, but it must be done. Wait here, man, while I go in and talk to Luigi. No relation to Mario. So yeah, this character's name is Nate Bull. As you will be uh, told in a few minutes. For seconds, I should say. Say hello to Nate Ball, lady. Nate Ball's got some business upstairs. Well, maybe you could do me a favor. One of my girls needs a ride, so grab a car and pick up Misty from the clinic, then bring her back here. Remember, no one messes with my girls. 
So keep your hands on the wheel. If you don't mess this up, maybe there'll be more work for you. Now get out of here. Okay, now you may be noticing, if you've also played the PC version, that uh, my version looks a bit different. Well, I have, a, like, I think one or two mods installed. One of them is a, um, is a texture mod. And the reason for that is because I noticed when the game first came out, a lot of the texture just looked very strange. Like, taxis just did not look right at all. They basically looked almost gunmetal gray. So this, uh, there was a mod to fix it. Um, and another one is the widescreen uh, fix, although it's probably not that noticeable in this one. Uh, or, well, it is probably isn't noticeable in this format. I wanted to actually match the PlayStation 2 size, so I'm actually recording this at 720 by 480. A bit silly, sure, but... Uh, at least it reduces the amount of memory I have to save, so now I can record for hours and hours on end without having to worry about size space. Fun times. And while this horrifying soundtrack may be a bit on the strange side, it was supplied to me by YouTube, by some library thingy that I'm allowed to have because I'm a partner. And that was a pretty easy first mission. All right. Now, this, this is a kind of a strange little connection I have, but I'd, I'd say that actually kind of a thing that made the sandbox genre kind of transition pretty well is that it could be compared to other genres in some ways. For example, this is a big open, like, this is a big open environment, and if you just keep looking, if you just are willing to explore, you can get rewards, much like a lot of 3D uh, 3D exploration games, all that Banjo Kazooie. Although obviously, the tone is completely different. And one of these un um, unlockables is hidden packages, which give you various rewards depending on how many you get. And in the next part, I am going to get all of them, except the one I just got. So join me next time. When we get all- Son of a bitch, my car just disappeared! What asshole just stole it? I'm looking up. But if they stole my car, they probably don't have it here. They probably went somewhere else. SHIT! But join me next time when I get all the hidden packages. See you guys then.